annihilation. How conservation science tracks global biodiversity loss. Gerardo Ceballos, Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México. On the 9th of November 1989, I was in Mexico City. I watched the events in Berlin on TV and remember the people on top of the wall and the flags. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a great honor to be here with you all, and I thank you, the Foundation, for inviting me. Today I'm going to talk about something that is uh, uh, incredibly sad, and basically the sound that you heard is uh, what we call uh, the silent uh, forest, because many places you go, you see beautiful forests, and there are no animals, you know? It's uh, like Aldo Leopold said, we live in the world of wounds. And uh, basically, if you could look around, the world is dotted with the, uh, uh, the impact of our activities. And uh, I am a scientist. I, do, I love to do basic research, but also I, I, I do conservation. I try that my work, my basic work in science, becomes, uh, on the one hand, conservation in the ground, and the other one, uh, public policy, you know? And, Biodiversity, let me tell you that just uh, 10 years ago, we thought there were probably 100 million species on Earth. The new estimates indicate that there are probably one trillion species, most of them microbes. That means that every time we destroy a small plot of land, we're destroying hundreds of thousands of species. And that's what is really uh, uh, impresses me. Uh, this is the uh, biodiversity, one trillion species, but in the last 10 years, just to give you an idea, more than 600 species of new mammals have been discovered. Our group of study has been uh, discovered, has discovered more than 17 species, and for me, it's like uh, getting the lottery 17 times, you know? Uh, but now we're looking at a very potential problem that is uh, basically what, uh, sorry, uh, this is the unprecedented loss of biodiversity, you know? And you will see you have some crosses around. If you please all take the crosses on top of you. If you look around and see how many there, this is me, means that 60% of all the animals, look at it, 60% of all the animals on the planet has been lost since 1970. This is a very overwhelming thing and uh, um, Basically, what we have been done with my study group is looking at what are we calling the sixth mass extinction. In the history of life, in the last 700 years, there have been five mass extinctions. And we define mass extinction basically on three grounds. They are catastrophic, meaning that a natural phenomenon like a meteorite it has uh, caused the problem. Second, 70% or more of all the species are lost. And third, geologically, they are rather uh, fast. In other words, uh, probably 10,000 10, of years, what is happening? Uh, a few years ago, three years ago, we decided to look out how fast are we losing a species. And basically, what we've come out is uh, the title of this uh, paper is accelerated uh, modern human-induced losses entering the sixth mass extinction. And the people in the journal say, Gerardo, we don't like this kind of titles because they are uh, a very uh, tough and we are, we are scientific uh, journal. And I said, OK, being a scientist, I have to be very careful not to be alarmist. But knowing the problem, how bad it is, it would be unethical not to put the uh, uh, proper title. And the response was very nice because the editor said, go ahead with the title. So uh, what we're talking now is that we have lost around 1,000 species of vertebrates, mammals, birds, amphibians, and uh, et cetera, in the last uh, uh, 500 years, most of them in the last uh, uh, 100 years. So with my study group, we, we look at that and I say, OK, are these really fast uh, uh, extinction rates or are we losing a species at the normal rate, the similar rate of the two, uh, last two million years? What we found is very uh, uh, astonishing. I was very impressed because if you see the dot over there, 
it will be the background extinction. It will mean that if the extinction in the last uh, 500 years will be the same like in the past 2 million years, you will have the lines below the uh, dotted line. Unfortunately, what you can see is all species have been lost at much faster rates. And in normal times, you know, uh, the normal rate of extinction is a very complicated uh, 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 equation, but basically we can translate it to that. We lose one species for every 5,000 species every 500, uh, 100 years. This is what happened in normal extinction rates in the last 2 million years. So one species for, for 5,000 species, 100 years. If we have 10,000 species, we will expect two extinctions. So, unfortunately, what we find out is that the species that we lost in these 100 years should have been lost in 10,000 years. That's the, main, the problem. We're losing a species at an unprecedented rate, and this has important implications, obviously for biodiversity on the planet, but also for us. And uh, uh, this is why we have these crosses, just to give you an idea how many, how many uh, species and population we have lost. So, um, our colleagues were uh, very surprised too, and one thing that is incredibly important about this paper, there are two papers we have published in the last two years, three years, is that people who work in, uh, uh, in the media told me that they calculated that the uh, uh, information reached 100 million people. And this is telling me three things. First, that people is interested in this topic. Second, that the urgency of the matter is uh, making uh, uh, the newspapers and the uh, public uh, ready. And third, that even this uh, really bad uh, news, uh, I mean, we're willing to uh, uh, grasp them to be able, to, what could, can we do? When we look at the species extinction, as bad as it is, it's not as bad as when we look at the population extinction. We call population extinctions uh, that are much more severe, severe, and we published this paper in where we look at, basically, look at that, 27,000 species of vertebrates. What were the trends of uh, populations of 27,000 species? And what we find, found is basically like that. A species, what we call a population losses, the, the uh, color, the light color is the distribution of lions, historical distribution of lions, and the uh, uh, orange one is the current distribution. In proper terms, what we're looking here is where lions have been lost. We have lost their function, the ecological function, and obviously uh, all the uh, uh, things associated to that. So we look at the lions and may, uh, some 177 uh, uh, species. And what is important to look at in this graph is the red areas have lost from 75% to 100% of the populations of mammals that we look at. We don't have data for many species, but uh, uh, for many more species. But what this is telling us is that we're losing so many species that we're losing the benefit that we get from those species uh, in this graph. Uh, I will give you another example, and these are species who are throughout the, 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 the uh, world in which there are less than 1,000 individuals. Just to give you an idea, most of these species will have probably 1 million uh, uh, individuals at the beginning of the 19th century. Now they have only less than 1,000. We call them zombies zombies in the sense that they are basically uh, living dead. They don't play the role that they used to play. Fortunately, they haven't become extinct, but uh, uh, it may be a, a, a question of time. And this is why I have devoted my life to try to understand what is the problem on the one hand, but on the other, to try to find solutions. It's very important for us, first, to understand what is the problem, and second, to find solutions. What we're doing to nature is really uh, uh, bad. This is uh, what we call it's an unprecedented assault on in nature. Just to give you an idea, every 15 minutes, an elephant is being killed illegally in Africa. 
There will be no elephant in the wild, no elephant in the wild, if we don't do something in the next uh, few years. There will be no elephants in the wild in the year 2030, at most. And the same for rhinos, and the same for giraffes, and the same for jaguars, and the same for tigers, and the same for snow leopards, and so on. I could spend here hours talking about all the species who are in danger. And uh, uh, if we see here, on, the, on, the, on this side, we see what is the trends of many thousands of species from 1970 to 2010. Then, uh, uh, and in the other one, you see the trends, the population trends of uh, these big animals. We're talking about that, in some cases, more than 900,000 individuals have been lost in a very few decades. And this is not only happening to, uh, to, to big animals, you know, this is also happening to uh, 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 smaller uh, animals. And in this particular case, uh, the insects in Germany, there was a paper last year here in Germany showing that there has been a loss of 75% of the biomass of insects in, in, in protected areas in Germany. And there is a recent study showing that in Puerto Rico, the, uh, a friend of mine did the study, and in the 1980s, they will go and use sweep uh, traps and, and basically caught thousands of individuals of in insects. Now they went, did it again, and probably they will got one or two instead of thousands of them. So what are the drivers of that? Basically, the drivers is population growth, you know, and consumption and inefficient technology, habitat loss, we're losing too much habitat. This particular one is terrible, the illegal trade. These are pangolins. These are pangolins. These are beautiful creatures who have been uh, killed illegally and were confiscated. We're talking about thousands of pangolins, you know? So uh, we know we have this cause a uh, global disruption and the likelihood of a, a very important, we don't know what can be the next collapse because there are so many things playing, interplaying. So why does it matter? I mean, people say, all, many times the people tell me, why does it matter? Okay, animals are really nice, it's very interesting, but we have people to feed, we have things to, to, uh, to cope with. And the problem with this is that there are ethical, philosophical, uh, uh, religious, there are many ways to, 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 many things to try to save those species. We forget all of them. Basically, what is happening here, we get from these plants of these animals, basically what we call ecosystem services. There are all the benefits that we get from free from nature because of these animals and plants. And they are essential for having life on Earth. For instance, the combination of the gases of the atmosphere is one of them. The quantity and quality of water is another one. And what we have known now is by destroying them, they destroy completely the whole chain and the whole structure of the environment. So we are eroding the capabilities of the planet to maintain human life. And uh, uh, these are other examples of the uh, 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 ecosystem services. So, what do, what, what do we have to do? And I say, I say that we have to become actors. We have to stop to being spectators. This is probably, for me, is one of the most challenging, is one of the most challenging uh, problems that, uh, in the history of humanity. We think that is uh, the, the, the scope of the problem just is similar to a nuclear holocaust. We have a really small window of time, we think, 20 years to avoid this massive loss of species of populations. And uh, according to what we do, what we do will determine how many of these species are being saved. But we also determine what is the fate of us. And uh, Jan Dort said something like this uh, many years ago, nature will only be, only be saved if man loves it, simply because it's beautiful for that too is an integral part of the human soul. And I wish, I want you to become move. I want you to become actors, I want you to help to each other to try to save this species. I hope my children, I hope your children, I hope your grandchildren will be able to see those animals, like these penguins, like these uh, elephants, you know, because 
The world will never be the same if we lose them. And paradoxically, by saving them, we're saving ourselves. Thank you very much.